Hey y'all, and welcome to my channel, Kitchen Notes for Nancy. If you're new here, I'd like to welcome you to my channel, and I hope you decide to subscribe before you leave today. And if you're a returning subscriber, I'd like to greet you with the customary, hey neighbor. In today's video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite one pan meals. Um, it's gotten cold here in Alabama, and so on this particular night, I wanted something that would be quick but warm and hearty. So if you wanna know how to cook a delicious one pan chicken and rice meal that you can have on the table in less than an hour from start to finish, all you gotta do is stay tuned. I'm gonna start with a quick overview of the ingredients, but keep in mind that all of the ingredients will be below for you. So this recipe is gonna call for about two to two and a half pounds of chicken. Um, I have an array of seasonings that include uh, black pepper, paprika, parsley, Italian seasoning, um, onion powder, garlic powder, the usuals. You're going to need some low sodium chicken broth to cook the rice in. Um, and then I also have some butter that I'm going to toast the rice. The olive oil is to help us do the initial sear on the chicken. Um, keep in mind, like I said, all of the ingredients are below, so check for the measurements. And the rice is parboiled rice. Um, and I just find that it cooks a little faster. So. going to go ahead and get our chopping out of the way. I'm going to chop the bell peppers and I just do them kind of a small dice and then I do the same thing to the onion and we're going to sit it to the side. Next up we have our seasonings and I'm just going to mix them in the bowl and then after I mix them I'm going to take the spoon and spread them all over the chicken and if you're if you've been to my channel before y'all know what happens next. I put the top on and then I shake it up and it just helps me uh, season both sides of the chicken without having to reach in and touch it. It's just the way I do it. It's also how I flour chicken. So if you like the little tip, use it. Um, it makes easy cleanup. So now we're getting ready to sear that chicken. We're gonna put a little oil in our cast iron skillet and we're gonna heat it up over a medium heat. Um, and then once that's nice and warm, well, while that's warming up, you're, you're going to see me shake my chicken. So this is how I actually get those seasonings on both sides. So it looks like it's heavy, but it's for both sides of the chicken. All right. So now that that pan is nice and hot, we're going to start the initial searing process on our chicken that's going to give us a nice brown color um, in the end. Now, you are not cooking this chicken all the way through. You're just browning it. And like I said, that's gonna give you that color, but it's also going to give you some fond, which is the stuff on the bottom of the pan that's going to insert a lot of flavor into your rice um, when we toast it. So the best way to get a good sear on your meat is to start skin side down and try not to touch it. You want it to sear on this side for about seven minutes. And then at the end of seven minutes, you're going to flip it over and then let it sear on the other side. Again, we are not cooking this chicken through. It will still be raw when we finish this process. This is just to start getting uh, some initial color and then as it bakes in the oven, because it's going to bake uncovered, it will finish browning. And if you saw that little piece that kind of stuck, that lets you know that the sear isn't quite done yet. So if your chicken is a little resistant, give it a little bit more time. So now I'm going to take that chicken out and that stuff on the bottom that you see is what I was telling you. It's called fond and that is flavor. Do not, do not, do not, do not clean this skillet. If you do, you will be losing so much flavor. 
So instead of cleaning the skillet, we're about to leave that in there and then start the next part of the process. Now we're going to take those three tablespoons of butter and add them to the skillet. And as this process moves along, you're going to see that all of that stuff on the bottom is going to come up. Um, I just kind of take my wooden spoon and I'm going to let that melt. And as I'm stirring, I'll scrape around and that's going to help it release from the pan. Now it's time to soften those vegetables. So I'm going to add in the red, orange, bell pepper, and the onion. And we're just going to let these soften until they're translucent. Uh, so probably about five to seven minutes. They're going to continue to cook uh, as we are baking it in the oven. And also, if you have not yet, go ahead and start preheating that oven. You're going to preheat it to 400 degrees. And if you're noticing what, what is happening here, the moisture that is in the vegetables are helping that. The moisture that's in the vegetables and the butter are helping the fond release off the bottom of the pan. If you're using cast iron, if you got it nice and seasoned, Nothing is going to stick to this. Like when I served it, the rice and everything is going to come right out of it. Uh, if you're using stainless steel, um, you shouldn't have any issues. But if you want to use something like Pam, you can. So it's been about six to seven minutes or so. And these vegetables are starting to soften nicely. Now we're going to go ahead and toast our rice. Toasting your rice elevates it a little bit. I don't know what it does to it, but toasting your rice, it just starts to seal those flavors in and makes that rice super, super flavorful. And like I told you, all that fun that was on the bottom, you see it is completely gone. And all of that flavor has now been inserted into your dish. So I'm just going to do the toasting process probably about three minutes or so. You're, again, you're not trying to cook it. You are just trying to get some color on the rice um, and start getting that flavor inserted in. So about three minutes and then we're going to move to the next phase. And don't forget those seasonings that are on your counter. Those extra seasonings that we had for the chicken, we are about to use them in just a second. So now that we've reached that three minute mark, we're going to go ahead and add in our low sodium chicken broth. Um, if you're not using low sodium chicken broth, keep that in mind as you work with the salt content. I like low sodium because it helps me control the salt uh, as I'm adding my spices in. And also cook your rice according to package instructions. This is two cups of rice. So I use four cups of liquid. Uh, rice is usually a one to two ratio. Uh, for however mean, however much rice you use, you use double the amount of liquid. Uh, now that we have that in there, those seasonings, there we go. We're going to shake those in, get those mixed up. And ladies and gentlemen, we are almost to the end. I told you, this dish comes together quickly. The longest part of this dish is actually chopping up the vegetables. That is literally the longest thing. Um, and then after you get that chicken seared, you are well on your way to getting dinner served for your family. So once you've gotten all those seasonings incorporated, you are going to take your chicken and lay it on top. Uh, you can lay it on there however you want. Um, I just mix it up and, you know, of course I had to try to make it kind of pretty for <laughs> the thumbnail, but Hey, you just get that chicken on there and then you're going to get ready to pop this in the oven. It is going to be cooked uncovered. Um, I cooked this 
for about 45 minutes. And the reason why I cook it for 45 minutes is to one, ensure that the rice gets done, but I also like to make sure that that chicken gets kind of tender. Um, I don't like to cut in chicken and it's done, but you know, um, it gives you a little resistance. I like my baked chicken kind of fall off the bone tender. So I cook this for 45 minutes at 400 degrees and it just makes sure that I don't have to fight with the food. <laughs> And 45 minutes later, this is what you have to serve for your family. I would like to thank you all for watching this recipe. If you like the recipe, drop down in the comment section. Just give me a few words. If you tried it, tell me what your thoughts are. What is your favorite comfort meal during cold weather? I am getting, I'm lining up videos for uh, the next few weeks. So if there's something you want to see, all you got to do is drop down in the comment section and let me know. Again, thank y'all so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, neighbors.